It's a real pleasure to be here. Um, it's also a bit of a surprise to be here. I'm still getting used to this new job I got, rather, to my amazement. Um, I've been in post uh, as Secretary of State for four months, but my association with the BPI goes back a lot longer. Um, it is 30 years, when I was very young, uh, that I first encountered the BPI as a special advisor in the Department of Trade and Industry when I worked with the great John Deacon on the blank tape levy, which some of you may recall. It is extraordinary that since that time we have been through, I think, three or four different formats, and blank tape is now firmly consigned to the uh, Science Museum. But actually, the issue which underlay the blank tape levy hasn't changed, and it is about ensuring that music artists get proper remuneration uh, for their creation, and that's something which I will come on to. Uh, but since that, those days, I've remained in close touch with the BPI, and so I've been present at many of the great events in the history of the BPI. I was there when Mick Fleetwood and Sam Fox were comparing the Brit Awards. I was there a few years later when Jarvis Cocker and Michael Jackson had their interesting encounter at the Brit Awards. Um, but you don't need me to tell you how important and successful your industry is, and Jeff has already touched on some of the statistics. But it is, you know, it, it has always been one of the things that we in this country are best at. And people talk about punching above your weight. I mean, that we have taken in the music industry to a degree which is simply phenomenal and continues to do so every year. As Jeff said, five out of ten albums uh, in the last year. And indeed, if you count ACDC as British, which I certainly would put in a strong case for, uh, I think it becomes uh, six out of ten. Um, but it isn't just the creatives, although they are absolutely indispensable, the artists, but it's also the sound engineers, the producers, the promoters, the roadies, even, um, I, I only discovered this word the other day, the luthiers, uh, who are the people who make guitars. But I went to a small um, artistic um, uh, center in Harlow on Friday where um, I met somebody who makes guitars. And he spends three months to make each um, instrument and has clients around the world. So we are extraordinarily good at all these things. And that benefits, obviously, people here. It generates a lot of income. Music tourism, uh, which is something which um, UK Music has drawn attention to, and I helped launch the report the other day. Music tourism generates more than three billion pounds of spending in the UK and sustains nearly 40,000 jobs. 546,000 people, that's over half a million, came here from overseas because of music. They spent an average of £751. So that is just one indicator of the huge contribution uh, that music makes. Um, and it is the case that music so often is associated with uh, different cities across the country. Um, the Beatles did as much to put Liverpool on the map as Bill Shankly. The Smiths and Oasis did the same for Manchester. Uh, I would put in a special bid for Judas Priest and Black Sabbath from uh, Birmingham. Uh, and even in my own county of Essex, we are proud to claim the prodigy Blur and Ollie Murs. Uh, soft power is something which is often talked about, but it really does have an effect. Uh, and people around the world look at this country and know about it in no small part because of the music that is created here. It is the case that there are some people in Japan and China whose only knowledge of the English language of the lyrics of Number of the Beast. <laughs> and there is not a single musical style at which a British artist does not excel. And even the, I talked about the albums last year and the top selling artists, and they cover an extraordinary range of different genres. One Direction, Ed Sheeran, Coldplay, Sam Smith, Pink Floyd. So music has an enormous role to play in our economic growth and in our international relations. But most important of all, I love music because it adds to the joy of life. And one of the great things about being Secretary of State 
is I get to go to lots of uh, concerts and gigs and I can claim its work. So not only was I at uh, Wembley a few months ago for ACDC, I was at Pete Tong at the Proms, I was at Pirates of Penzance at the ENO, uh, and I've got to look forward to Romeo and Juliet at the Royal Opera House, and then a week, all in one week, Judas Priest on Tuesday, Madonna on Wednesday, and Deep Purple on Thursday. I cannot think of a better way to spend a week. Um, and music also uh, has a hugely important role to play in the curriculum. Uh, my colleague Nikki Morgan, the Secretary of State for Education, is very keen to promote teaching of creative subjects in school, and the Department for Education has invested in music, art, and cultural product, projects. And this includes the national network now of 123 music education hubs, the Music and Dance Scheme, and national youth music organisations. Arts Council England uh, provides funding to the mu music industry through a variety of programmes, including the Momentum Music Fund, which helps to sustain emerging artists. The Music Export Growth Scheme helps independent music companies to reach overseas markets, uh, assisted by UKTI and indeed the BPI. And Mercury Prize winners, Young Fathers, are just one band who have benefited from that. And then the Live Music Act and the Rehearsal Room Scheme have both had a very important impact as well. We have done our best to support the music industry, not least by trying to deregulate. Um, as many of you know, I spent the previous uh, 10 years chairing the Select Committee in Parliament. We produced a report about four or five years ago um, which called upon the government to uh, liberalise the rules around entertainment licensing of small music venues. You'll remember the old two in the bar rule. Um, that report uh, would have had very little impact had um, I not had a call on the day on which we had the press conference to launch it uh, from Fergal Sharkey who said to me, would you like me to come along to the press conference and sing something as well? And I thought, yeah, I think that might actually get the coverage we're looking for. So he came along with an acoustic guitarist and sang Teenage Kicks, and we made the Today programme the next morning. And I was really pleased uh, when the government uh, adopted those proposals and deregulated uh, entertainment licensing uh, for small venues. Um, I know that there are other issues around planning at the moment. Uh, the agent of change principle uh, to protect music venues from noise enforcement when it comes to changes in neighbouring land use. That is a complicated matter. Uh, obviously it's to do with planning, licensing and noise nu nuisance regimes and it's not in my gift. Uh, but nevertheless, one of the roles we see uh, for my department and in particular my responsibility is to speak up for the music industry across the government uh, and ensure that the concerns of your industry are properly taken into account. And we've already made changes to the national planning policy framework to include specific reference to taking live music venues into account. Jeff has mentioned uh, the work that's already been done to bring in age classification for online music venues, and I very much welcome uh, the agreement that's been reached between the BPI and the British Board of Film Classification to achieve that. We've uh, already had some success with tax reliefs, the 25% tax relief on qualifying expenditure for orchestras, which is coming in in April. Um, and then Jeff also mentioned um, the BBC Charter Review. Um, it is probably the top issue in my intray. Um, charter renewal only comes around once every 10 years, and it is an opportunity to ask what is the role of the BBC um, how should it be paid for, what should it be doing, how should it be governed. And the last time we did this ten years ago, it is extraordinary to think, actually it's you know, not that long ago, and yet at that time, the vast majority of people could choose between the BBC, ITV and Channel 4, and that was it. Now you have Freeview, so everybody has 40 channels, a lot of people will subscribe to subscription services, Sky or Virgin or whatever, and have access to 100 more. You've got new entrants, not just uh, Sky, but now BT Vision that is moving into the content business, uh, and of course people like Amazon 
and Netflix, who are transforming the broadcasting landscape. So it just seemed to me sensible to say, given the world has changed so much, um, what is the role of the BBC in that? Um, some thought that that instantly meant that I wanted to close the BBC down. I have no intention of closing the BBC down. I love the BBC. And uh, I do think the BBC will al always play a very important part uh, in the broadcasting landscape. Um, music is and will continue to be, in my view, a core part of the BBC's offering. Indeed, if anything, I think that music doesn't get enough attention from the BBC on television. Um, I can recall, you know, growing up, um, a number of BBC shows, not least Top of the Pops, obviously, uh, on BBC, which don't appear to be uh, there today. Um, but on radio, um, from Radio 3 and the Proms through to Radio 1, Radio 1 Extra, all of those serve audiences who would not otherwise be catered for. Uh, by the commercial broadcasters. The commercial broadcasters have a key role to play, but um, I know that for the labels and for the artists, it is still the case that the place that they prize most to get their albums played is Radio 1. Um, and I'm a huge supporter of Radio 1, not least because they took me to Pete Tong on the proms the other day. Uh, but that is... Um, well, that is going to be part of the debate that we're having, uh, but I can reassure you that, in my view, uh, music must remain an important part of what the BBC does, not least because of the opportunity it does uh, to create the artists of the future. There are obviously concerns. The BBC Trust itself has already uh, noted that there is quite a large crossover in audiences uh, between Radio 1 and Radio 2, and that's something the BBC are trying to address. But Charter Review, as I say, is an opportunity to hear views, uh, and I hope that everybody here will also take the opportunities to uh, input into that process. And the other major um, challenge is the extraordinary technological change uh, that is taking place, and it is still very hard to see where that is going to end up. Uh, but there has been... Uh, a significant fall in the sale of CDs. Obviously, the growth of streaming is dramatic and is likely to continue. Um, how that is going to develop, uh, I don't know, but it is the case that somebody pointed out to me uh, the other day that um, the purchase of music seems to be in decline. The number of people who would regularly buy CDs is not anything alike matched by the number of people who purchase uh, through download. Uh, streaming is where um, the growth is taking place uh, and does that mean that we will one day reach a point where people don't buy music to keep because they don't need to because it's all available uh, through streaming? I don't know. Um, what, but that is the kind of challenge uh, which your industry faces and it isn't just your industry, it's every one of the creative industries. Um, but the key is that whatever means people choose to consume music, the important thing is that we sustain the creativity which um, this country is so good at. And Frank Turner said a few years ago, a situation where people labor and are not reimbursed is untenable and unjust. It seems churlish to restate, but let's put it this way. Recording isn't free, instruments aren't free, session players, producers, engineers, artists aren't free. My time isn't free either. I work hard and I expect to get paid for it. So I think that there is a great future for your industry because people are always going to want great music. Um, but the technological changes are going to provide challenges, not least in the area which Jeff mentioned and which I have spent a long time um, focusing on, which is intellectual property rights and copyright. Um, copyright infringement uh, is still a major challenge. It puts at risk the jobs, the investment, and the, most of all the creative activity. We've done a lot already. Uh, we have taken a lead internationally in tackling IP crime. As you know, we set up the Police Intellectual Property Crime Unit run by the City of London Police. Uh, we've also made reforms to the Intellectual Property Enterprise Court and strengthened the ability of rights holders to have copyright infringing websites blocked by court order, and Jeff referred to some of the successes that have already been achieved. 
And I'm also delighted that the industry has come together and reached agreement with the uh, ISPs and others uh, to set up Creative Content uh, UK. And the government has pledged three and a £0.6 million pounds towards an educational campaign. Operation Creative, a partnership between industry enforcement agencies and government to disrupt websites providing unauthorised access to illegal copyright content, has seen a 73% decrease in advertising on infringing websites from the UK's top advertising companies. And in relation to updating the e-commerce directive, the government is, has yet to form a firm view on the need for any reform, but any decision to do so, we are clear, has to be evidence-based and will be made in light of wider digital single market reviews and actions. But whatever happens in the digital single market uh, proposals, I am absolutely clear that copyright protection must remain a central uh, imperative in that, uh, because without that, uh, the jobs, the creativity of which all of you in this room represent will be put at risk. Um, so I am, I hope, already alive to some of the challenges uh, that face your industry, um, but I would say that the door in my department will always be open to the music industry. We're hoping to have a roundtable very shortly to talk about some of the challenges, but please feel free uh, to come to us if you think there are ways in which the government can ensure that British music remains unquestionably the best in the world. Thank you.